Hello cloud gurus, I'm Nigel Poulton, author of the Kubernetes book, and welcome to Kubernetes This Month. As always, we'll round up the major Kubernetes-related news from the month, we'll dive deeper into a couple, and then we'll round things out with the chance for you to test your Kubernetes knowledge with a brand new Guru of the Month question. So, grab yourself a seat, and let's find out what's been going down in the world of Kubernetes. So first up this month, the CNCF sandbox process isn't working so well. So they're trialing a new process, and we'll get into that later in the episode. Into the hosted Kubernetes space though, GKE, most definitely one of my favorite hosted Kubernetes services, has a cool article out there about running 15,000 node clusters. So yeah, that is a Kubernetes cluster with 15,000 nodes. Now that on its own is very cool, but the article talks as well about the benefits that clusters like this can bring to certain organizations and use cases. Into the service mesh space, and Linkerd announced version 2.8 with a multi-cluster extension for secure connections across Kubernetes clusters headlining the feature list. The AWS App Mesh controller for Kubernetes is now GA, and there's talk in the community again that Google might be about to donate Istio to a foundation. But if the rumors are right, it won't be to the CNCF. Now, it's all speculation at the time of recording, but the chatter on the socials is centering around Google wanting to maintain more control and ownership than the CNCF would allow. Congratulations to the folks at Harbor for achieving graduation from the CNCF. Flagger 1.0 is here. Now, Flagger is all about reducing the risk of rollouts by progressively shifting traffic to new versions via common release strategies like canaries and blue-greens, but all while running tests and the likes. Rancher's Longhorn Cloud Native Storage achieved 1.0, and wrapping the news for this month, Gartner are predicting world domination for containers. Well, those are my words, right? But they are predicting containers to capture 15% of all enterprise apps across 75% of businesses in the next three to four years. Now, 15% might not sound a lot, and I get that it's not quite world domination, but it is a lot of apps. And that, Gurus, wraps the news for this month. For this month's Deeper Dives, we'll look closer at the CNCF Sandbox and Harbor 1.0. The goal of any project entering the CNCF should be to mature and ultimately graduate, but it's a three-step process, or there are three maturity levels. So projects come in at the bottom at Sandbox, hopefully mature to the incubating phase, and then they eventually graduate, and then it's a party, right? However, each level of maturity hopefully maps to increased use and adoption of the project. So generally speaking, sandbox projects tend to appeal to early adopters and visionaries. Incubating projects see wider adoption by the so-called early majority, and then by the time a project graduates, it's all mature and it's in wide use. And the whole process, right, is intended to be neutral and safe with no politics or favorites. Only that's not always the case. And the Technical Oversight Committee recognized this and are adopting an improved sandbox experience. And at least one of the reasons this is important is that the whole process can be, or should be, right, a great way for important projects in the ecosystem to gain adoption and align with other related projects. So good luck to the CNCF and the wider community. So Harbor just graduated the CNCF and they released a version 2.0. So first and foremost, a huge congrats to the project. It's only the 11th project to graduate and it joins an illustrious list that includes, well, Kubernetes itself, but Prometheus, Envoy, Containerd, and recently Helm. Now then, Harbor itself is an open source registry for cloud native artifacts. So rather than just container images, it supports Helm charts, OPAs, and more. And it implements policies, role-based access control, replication, and security scanning. So it's definitely cool. It started life as an internal VMware project for storing container images. But since then, it has been a stellar journey. So it was open sourced in 2016, donated to the CNCF in 2018, and it graduated in 2020, with graduation indicating solid project governance, overall maturity, and of course, decent growth in both its community and its user base. So 
If you're looking at hosting your own cloud native registry, definitely give Harbor a look. Okay, guru of the month. Last month, I asked what best described the Kubernetes Cloud Controller Manager. And the correct answer was D. It is a controller that abstracts, provisions, and manages storage, networking, and other resources on an underlying cloud platform. Now, as usual, we had plenty of correct answers, but as always, there can only be one winner. And this month, it's Tejinder Singh. So Tejinder is a software engineer from Virginia in the US. And Tejinder, you'll be getting a goodie bag in the post from us. Well, thanks to everyone else who took the time to answer. It's always fun. This week's question is in the forum link below, and I'll see you all again next month. Same cube time, same cube place.